When people think of Florida, they usually think of alligators. Hundreds of species of large marine animals live in the waters of Florida, like the alligator. The alligator's big and mean, but today we're going to meet an animal that's big and gentle. I'm talking about the Florida manatee. Manatees are marine mammals, and they're huge, which is no surprise since they're distant relatives of the elephant. But manatees are among the most gentle animals on Earth. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. It's hard to understand what's so amazing about manatees until you've been in the water with one and looked it right in the eye. Today I'm going swimming with manatees in the backyard of the Sisto family in Crystal River, Florida. The Sistos live on a canal where manatees hang out during the winter. Manatees don't like the ocean's chilly winter temperatures. The canal, fed by a warm water spring, is just right. The canal falls within the Crystal River National Wildlife Refuge in Florida, which protects manatees. The sanctuary sets limits on human manatee contact. People can swim with manatees if they respect the animals. They must also stay out of the special roped off areas set aside for those manatees that don't want to be bothered. The manatees that like the attention let people get pretty close. I finally look one in the eye. What I see is unbelievable. With the help of a special piece of diving gear called a rebreather, I'm able to watch a manatee sleep. Because the rebreather produces fewer bubbles and noise than ordinary scuba gear, my approach doesn't startle the animal and wake it up. The manatee doesn't even know I'm here. I think it might be snoring. Look at that thing, it's completely zonked out. Manatees can stay underwater for as long as 20 minutes, so even during sleep they must periodically rise to the surface to breathe. They gently float up to take a breath, and then gently sink back down like they're in a dream the whole time. The rebreather also helps me get close to a mother and her calf without startling them. Notice the calf nursing from the back of her mother's flipper. It's one reason scientists think that manatees and elephants probably evolved from the same ancestor. Elephants nurse in the region of the mother's armpit too. The mother and calf seem to communicate in part through a series of sounds or vocalizations. Calves stay with their mother for one to two years before going off on their own. Fully grown, this calf could be 15 feet long and weigh 3,000 pounds. But manatees can't cope very well with all the new people who come to live in Florida every year. Why? Well, for one thing, their food supply is disappearing. Over a thousand people move to Florida every day, and they all want to live near the water. So they build houses near the water, and they have to build these seawalls to keep the houses from falling in. The problem is that the plants manatees eat can't grow on seawalls. Manatees are sometimes called sea cows, and that's because they only eat plants. In fact, it's the only marine mammal that eats just plants. Manatees spend eight hours a day feeding and may consume 200 pounds of vegetation. As vegetarians, manatees harm no other animals and pose no danger to man. But here's the problem. Sea walls, designed to keep houses from falling into the water, can't grow the shallow plants that manatees eat. 
the manatee's food supply and its habitat are disappearing. And here's another problem, speedboats. Manatees are slow and boats hit them. Manatees have no natural predators here in Florida and until recently they flourished. Without predators to evade, manatees didn't have to be very fast. In fact, they move so slowly that algae grows on their backs. I often see fish dining on the algae, which seems to annoy the manatees. And so, manatees can't move fast enough to get out of the way of a speedboat. Dozens of manatees die each year from collisions with boats, or from injuries that set in after a boat's propeller slices up the manatee's back. Most manatees we see have propeller scars. Living in speedboat infested waters is like living next to the freeway, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for 50 to 60 years. To take a breath, the manatee has to basically run out in the middle of the freeway and then run back. Before people, and speedboats, manatees had the place to themselves. They breathed a lot easier. Here in the sanctuary, there's a strictly enforced speed limit, but it's difficult to enforce speed limits everywhere. Right there, right in front of you, there's an animal right there. People come to Florida in part to go boating, and they want to go fast sometimes. And not everyone's backyard is a safe manatee refuge. Sometimes manatees get themselves into trouble. Like this one, stuck in a storm drain. SeaWorld is rescuing it. Injured manatees are often brought back to SeaWorld, which operates a sort of manatee hospital. There's even a pediatric ward. Pistachio was barely a week old when he was orphaned. SeaWorld's veterinarians developed a special formula for the calf designed to replicate its mother's milk. For adult manatees, SeaWorld uses a special tank with a floor that can be raised and lowered so the veterinarians and handlers can easily treat the animals. Snorkel arrived at SeaWorld, seriously emaciated. Since her arrival here, she's gained weight, but today they're trying to clear a blockage in her intestine. Jessica is in danger of losing her flipper. She's a victim of fishing line wrapped around her flipper, which cut off the circulation, another man-made threat. The treatment over, the exhausted manatees are lowered back into their pool. Lunch is waiting and a bit of a rest. Perhaps someday soon, these two animals will be released back into the wild to live out their natural lives. Manatees have been around for 50 million years. People have been around for less than a million years, so they've been here much, much longer than us. But in recent years, they're dying faster than they can reproduce. We need to act quickly and decisively to stop the loss of manatees and help this species recover. If we don't, the manatee will vanish forever. It would be a very blue world indeed without manatees.